So I'm very happy to be here and uh, to present this um, um, this perspective, as the, as the title says, about my experience as a DOEJ ambassador uh, in the last two years. So. I'm sure everyone here knows who uh, who are you, who we are, um, what is the DOAJ, but I will uh, give you some general ideas to um, have this uh, panorama uh, and to understand what I am going to talk about my experience as a DOAJ ambassador. So we have we are a list, a white list of journals of. Uh, completely open access journals. We have more than 12,000 uh, 12, journals now from different uh, countries from all over the world uh, and different languages and different disciplines. We cover um, the disciplines that are classified in the Library of Congre Congress classification. So you, you, we use this uh, schema. Um, the DOAJ is free. Uh, for users and for publishers, and all the services that we provide are also for free, uh, meaning uh, not only the list or, or the metadata, but also uh, workshops and other things that we do f uh, to improve and to uh, to improve the quality and the, the practices of the journals. Uh, we are funded by donations mainly, and I will talk about this uh, later. And our aim is to increase the visibility and the and ease to use of open access academic journals. So we are a platform that collects metadata from the journals, and but uh, it is important to say that we are uh, just the list. And if you want to download a full paper in in the OAJ, you we uh, we give you uh, the link to the to the journal site, so that in, the, in this way we, we try to increase the traffic for the uh, sites of, of the journals, right? Our mission is to increase the visibility, mainly, the accessibility, reputation, usage, usage and impact of quality, peer-reviewed, open access, Open access, completely open access journals, uh, meaning that we don't we don't uh, um, index journals that with with embargoes or or with um, uh, other schemas that are not fully open access. Um, and regardless discipline, geography, or language, uh, all of the journals uh, publish their papers in the language that they they use. We don't ask them to to translate anything. Uh, actually, we have a lot of uh, we we are a team, an international team, so we review journals in the in the local languages. Um, the OAJ work with publishers, editors. Uh, and journals managers uh, to help them understand the value and best of best practice uh, publishing. Our mission is to uh, promote best practices among the editors, especially in the global south. And that is uh, the thing that I will uh, uh, emphasize, because the DOAJ uh, want to help the community in the global uh, uh, in a global perspective. So DOAJ is committed to be 100% uh, independent. And actually, as I said before, our services are free. And we are not, try, um, in, uh, we are not planning to uh, uh, charge any fee for any of the services. So uh, this schema of funding by donations allow us to uh, to give this uh, these services free, um, w w what w w four ways the OAJ makes an impact? Well, help publishers uh, to serve authors better because we think that the, if the publishers improve their practices, improve the journals, uh, authors will uh, will be interested in publishing these journals. Uh, we are not uh, as as a number three or no. Sorry, but uh, we are not connected with this impact factor system and that. We are trying to uh, raise awareness about the quality of practices, of editorial practices, not uh, the citations or the systems that are not uh, very um, uh, centered in quality for authors. Um, we help 
publishers to adopt best practices, as I said, and we operate globally in a, based in a ambassadors and volunteers uh, program. Um, the, the DOAJ core team is like 10 people, but we have ambassadors and volunteers that work reviewing journals, reviewing applica applications uh, in, uh, in different regions, in different languages. And the important thing here is that uh, our mission as ambassadors is to understand and to uh, improve these practices in the, in the local context. For example, in Latin America, we, uh, we have uh, many issues regarding, for example, fundings or uh, infrastructure, right? So we are, uh, um, we are helping uh, these communities uh, with these specific, uh, these specific issues. Uh, it's different in India, for example, where they have a lot of predatory journals uh, problems. So uh, ambassadors in India have to uh, do different things regarding the promotion of best practices and regarding the, the, this, uh, um, this problem of, uh, of predatory journals and the, uh, uh, they are trying to serve the community uh, meaning the authors, the publishers, the researchers, etc. Et so, uh, indexing in DOAJ increases traffic to journal sites and visibility of content. As I said, we are not, uh, we are only a um, list that links you to the sites. Uh, we work based on these principles of transparency and best practices in publishing uh, journals. This is a new version of the principles, and as, uh, as, you, as you see, uh, these principles um, are not only uh, for the website or the technical uh, stuff, but also for, for ethical issues, for uh, licensing and other uh, other points that are very uh, necessary to p to be, uh, improve in journals. For example, number number um, eight, author fees. We are promoting a, a, a policy of transparency regarding the charges that uh, journals have in case they have uh, for authors, because as you know, the APC is now it's a, it's a model that is increasing in some regions, and it is important for us that journals state clearly what is the policy about uh, their their their, their uh, financial model, right? Uh, other principles like number uh, thirteen, uh, archiving, uh, the it's. Um, it's the, the, the policy on, on how journals keep their, their archives in a, in a safe place and they have this uh, kind of, uh, so they, they have these services like Portico or other services that can uh, keep, um, make, make them keep, save the, the stuff they publish. Um, and other principles uh, are also re um, related to ethics as I said, for example, peer review, of course, and other uh, um, things like an editorial board, etc. These principles were created by OASPA, DOAJ, and uh, the, Co the COPE, the Committee on Publication Ethics, and these are the basis for our criteria of indexing, right? Uh, we have. 55 uh, criteria for indexing a journal, but we have seven criteria that uh, are, um, th th this, cr this criteria included in the 55 uh, general criteria are for the DOAJ seal, which is a quality uh, distinction for journals that are really uh, um, uh, improving practices in digital environment. Right, for example, having an, an archival arrangement or have licenses embedded in the articles, etc. So uh, there are uh, 
uh, journals that have this seal, uh, and that that doesn't mean that the journals that do, don't have the seal are low quality journals. But these practices, I think, uh, uh, show the, the the sustainability of journals. So that is our intention to uh, award the, the, the journals with a seal. So for the next two years, uh, DOAJ has a strategy uh, in terms of funding and sustainability. There's an, uh, an, an initiative that is SCOS. It's an initiative uh, that uh, Ha, uh, that many in some universities in North America and Canada and United States and Canada have that uh, they are uh, uh, making a coalition to support some initiatives uh, that are clue and that are really important for the open science uh, movement in the next years. Um, we establish, um, we have to establish how uh, this uh, this uh, project, the DOAJ, will keep uh, valuable and relevant for the community, and um, we, uh, we 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 would like to improve our services and support to to account holders for all types and sizes because we have uh, libraries that use uh, the DOAJ, but also universities, also the research centers, and, and many um, stakeholders use this list to identify these journals. For example, the, the European Com Com um, Union use it, this, uh, this directory to uh, um, identify the journals that has uh, that uh, where people uh, from the EU uh, can publish in open access. So we are a clue uh, project for the community. So functionality, stability, and scalability. Um, we, as, uh, as I said before, we try to, uh, and our intention is to uh, keep the platform available for everyone. And uh, that is uh, an important uh, technical um, compromise with with uh, with the community, um, and uh, of course uh, we are planning to uh, increase uh, or to improve services, like for example um, services for publishers that can. Um, uh, uh, apply their journals, and then they, they uh, we are planning to to put some functionalities in the site for publishers in order to save their data, etc. So we are in this uh, in this thing for the next two years, and um, in terms of education and outreach, we are committed to uh, um, to promote cognitive justice. And that is the point that I would like to emphasize here. Cognitive justice is, an, is a concept uh, uh, that it was uh, uh, established by Florence Perron, uh, which is a, a researcher here in, in Quebec. And that means a situation, phenomenon, and policy or attitude that prevents students and researchers, the cognitive injustice, right? to deploy the full potential of their research capacity in service to local sustain uh, sustainable development. So, in terms of cognitive justice, DOAJ has launched two years ago a program for ambassadors in the Global South, right? Uh, meaning that we were, um, we were hired to uh, promote best practices and to help people in the global south to improve quality of journals because we know that we have a lot of bias and a lot of uh, gaps in the global south to uh, not only in terms of funds or infrastructure but also in terms of professionalization of people that manage the journals and that is the point that I would like to uh, talk to you about our our role in uh, in, in the global south, in the in regions like Latin America, Asia, or uh, some countries in Asia and Africa, is um, to promote uh, the importance of these practices and the importance of giving authors and giving the community a good service in in terms of uh, the journal that uh, uh, ha uh, that, that that the journal really. Um, um, the journal can service uh, ha, uh, be a, a good service for the community. I mean, for example, uh, in Latin America, there are many universities that have journals because they have to 
uh, to have publications in the universities and that, but the journalists live like two years just two years or, or, or uh, three years, because after three years they don't have funds, they don't have people, and they, they only publish for the same authors in the university, etc. So publications are like just, uh, just a, um, a project that can not be sustainable in the future. So uh, we are uh, a group of people from, from these regions, and uh, I, I invite you to read this article. We, 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 uh, we were interviewed uh, for Saiyan DevNet, and uh, we in Asia, South Africa, or India, so, sorry, India, South Africa, and Latin America, um, we um, are facing this, these challenges and these problems. In Latin America specifically, we have a model that is publicly funded, as you may know. Uh, may, most of the journals are uh, published by research institutions, universities, or higher education institutions in general. We have a model uh, that is not based in APCs, so a very low percentage of journals in Latin America charge fees for authors, and actually uh, I think the, the most expensive APC in, in, we have in Latin America is like uh, $1,000 in Brazil. Uh, but in general, we have a very few journals with APCs. And uh, since the 90s, uh, we have other platforms that really have uh, boost open access in, uh, in Latin America. These platforms are Cielo, uh, Redalic, and Latindex. And that is a they, they are clue actors in the, in the model in Latin America. But many of the issues that we face in Latin America are related to uh, research and education systems uh, problems in general. For example, um, in Argentina, this year the, the Ministry of Science has uh, become a secretary, secretaria, meaning that it's a lower uh, um, organi organization, right? It's a, it's a lower level in the, in the structure of the state. So uh, we have a lot of cuts in research uh, in Latin America, not only Argentina, but also Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia, other countries, or the, these big countries has uh, this year and last year uh, has a very uh, are facing a serious problems in terms of funding. And this uh, <laughs> this meme, meme uh, show us th this could be Brazil, but uh, also Argentina, or put the flag whatever you want in there. <laughs> Yeah, Brazil, it's, uh, it's facing a very uh, problematic situation in terms of the new person that could be the president there. And uh, science is, is, is also in problems in Brazil. So it's because the neoliber neoliberal governments are now in Latin America stronger, I think, than the 90s. And in science communication, that this means budgetary adjustments, and of course, for for journals, it's a, a problem. Program closure, closures, uh, for example, uh, again in Latin America or in sorry in Argentina or in other countries, uh, the scholarships for students are lo uh, uh, are facing also this this problem because they are. Uh, they are not uh, enough for people, etc. So, and of course, this neoliberalism in scholarly communication is also uh, present in the impact factor-based uh, policies. The two examples, uh, the two examples we have in Latin America is Mexico and Colombia. Their policies on journals are based now in the impact factor, uh, where the where the in which. Uh, Quartil, the journals are uh, positioned, uh, is is important. It's a, it's a clue thing to give them uh, fundings from the state. If the if the journal is in quartile one, they receive a, a certain amount of, of money. But if they are not uh, in this list, they are uh, 
facing again new uh, problems in terms of budgets. Uh, in Colombia, there's a new term that they are using, which is revisticidio, which meaning it's meaning uh, like journal side, you know, like almost, uh, uh, the death of journals. Because uh, after this classification based in impact factor, many journals are disappearing. Or they are saying, well, wh why to fund this if they are not international, if they are not high quality journals? So uh, this is a, a big problem there. And I think that all the time and resources invested in this journal uh, in the last year, uh, in the last years, are losing now their, uh, they are, they are Sorry. Um, this uh, investment now, because they are disappearing or they are just, uh, um, the, it's l like the second project for universities. It's not the most important now to uh, publish journals in, in Colombia. Uh, but we have um, a lot of journals uh, that are new, uh, new or that are, uh, Applying at least for for the DOAJ, uh, Brazil has a lot. A lot we have we we receive a lot of applications from Brazil, but uh, many of them can't pass our criteria review, right? Because they are facing uh, um, or they, they they are they are not uh, they don't have enough people there or they don't have enough resources or etc. Uh, these kind of problems that I mentioned. Um, we last year we published a, uh, an article on systems of uh, po uh, evaluation of journals, and uh, actually two uh, articles appeared in this at the same time because these big problems were were uh, uh, very uh, important for our region. And what we sa said in that are in these articles was that. Uh, one of the main problems of uh, this situation in, uh, for journals is, of course, people that are uh, working in g these journals. Uh, as you know, the editors are mainly scholars from the universities, so uh, and they uh, uh, they of course have other uh, functions in the university. They are researchers, they are instructors, uh, and the the function of being an editor is like a very uh, low recognized uh, work. Um, they have uh, job insecurity, many, uh, uh, not only the scholars, but the staff members of the journals have really low uh, um, uh, security in job. So they are, for example, students or people that are hired just for just temporary, etc. And uh, they ha they face a lot of challenges in terms of the digital literacy. No, there there are people that don't have the skills to use the tools or to mark up the XML, etc. Uh, and they challenge this uh, system, uh, this evolution systems where the, where they where in the in the evolution systems they are not recognized uh, as editors. So this is a list of activities they have to do. Uh, in, it's just 26, but you know that, that uh, they also have to do the uh, the teaching and other work. So it's very complicated for them to uh, to keep the journal in a in a good uh, in a good quality because uh, they don't have uh, incentives, etc. And we have a lot of. Um, types of journals in, in, in Latin America. And we have a lot of cases. Uh, I, I met uh, an editor in, in Cielo 20, the, the event last, uh, last week, and she told me, well, we are ed editing or publishing a journal in education, and we have, uh, uh, we have to print it, because it's for teachers. It's a journal that is important to be in schools. But Cielo or, or no, the, the, the agencies are telling us uh, you have to be online, just online and, and buy the DOI, etc., etc. But we are really, uh, um, we need to be printed and we need to go to the, uh, for the teachers. So I, to finish 
I just want you to read these uh, questions that I receive constantly in the OAJ, uh, because it shows that we are still facing a lot of, uh, of uh, problems in terms of digital tools, in terms of uh, knowledge about licensing, etc. Uh, and for con to conclude, editorial staff, uh, as, as I said, often lack the digital literacy. Uh, they face language barriers as well. They are um, they have staff uh, shortage, and uh, in many cases the staff members are just one person or two people. Uh, the, the question is, what is the next open science? Yeah but they are not uh, very aware of what is and what they need to really improve their journals. Thank you. Uh, well, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I agree with a lot of the argument uh, on, on the revisicidio issue, but uh, do, do you actually, do, do, does DOAJ, uh, does any, do, do you do any work with funders? rather than editors, because I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're really just responding. And I, I think like Mexico or Brazil or Argentina have the advantage that like, funders are very centralized. They have a lot of power and uh, unlike uh, say in, in, in the US or Canada, they have like each university with their own tenure track policies. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, funders in Brazil, uh, as everybody's pretty much tenured, funders have a lot of power. So I mean, and they're actually sabotaging themselves. I mean, we put a lot of money in Cielo and then we put a lot of money saying don't publish in Cielo and publish in. So I mean, uh, maybe that's really the, the, the advocacy that has to be done is with funders and maybe like representing journals, mm -hmm. you can actually talk to copies and APK, seat or whatever do you do, you do that work uh, we don't we don't do that work uh, now but we are planning as I said for the next two years to get involved more with with funders uh, but we also are uh, um, a stakeholder that uh, respects you know the, the independence of of uh, countries or, or whatever so because uh, it's not a, a DOAJ um, want to serve the community, but also respects the, the models, for example, the APC models, right? So yeah, we are trying to, to get more, more closer with the funders, but it's a strategy that is in course now. Okay. So thank you.